Look, it's time to get excited again, this time about that second great document from August 1789. We had the August Decrees, now we've got to talk about the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen, also created by the National Assembly, which is soon to become the National Constituent Assembly, the first revolutionary government of France. The Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen, despite its kind of sexist title, is the birth document, it's if you like the starting document of our modern concept of human rights. Yes, the Americans had a Bill of Rights before this, but this document is the document that captures the ideas of those wonderful philosophers of Voltaire and Rousseau, who came up with liberty, equality, fraternity or brotherhood community as the central ideas for creating a new society. So who wrote this document? Well, they're an interesting mix, actually. You might think that this is going to be a totally third estate document. But the first author, the first person involved in the drafting of the Declaration of Rights of Men and Citizens was an abbe, Emmanuel Joseph Sayers. He was an abbot. There's actually portraits. This one's by Jacques-Louis David, but there are portraits of him actually in the robes of the clergy. So he is also the person who wrote the tennis court oath. He drafted the tennis court oath. So one of the leaders of these revolutionary ideas was actually in the first estate. The Marquis de Lafayette. The Marquis de Lafayette was a member of the French aristocracy. Pardon me. A Marquis is like a lord. He's a nobleman. He'd fought in the American Revolution for Louis XVI's armies. He had met a lot of the famous American revolutionary leaders, and he was a great believer in liberty, equality, and fraternity. So two of the people who drafted the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen were actually not of the Third Estate at all. They joined with representatives of the Third Estate in the National Assembly to draft, to draft it. The last of the three great writers of the Declaration of Rights of Man wasn't even French. Yes, he would have been a member of the Third Estate, but he was an American. In fact, Thomas Jefferson becomes the third president of the United States. So the authors of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen, one of the great documents of French history and one of the great documents of modern history that lays the foundation for modern human rights, were a priest, a nobleman, and an American, writing the revolutionary document that laid the foundation of the rights of citizens across Europe. It has similarities, of course, to that foundation document of the Americans in the United States called their Bill of Rights. But let's have a look at this document in a bit more detail. So find that favorite search engine of yours again, and this time type into it Avalon Project, with an in inverted commas, Declaration Rights of Man, 1789, and let's go and see what Yale Law School has done with that document. They think it's fairly significant for us to know about. Now, I'll pause this in a moment and set it up for myself on the screen so we can have a quick look at it. But if you want to, hit pause in a moment and type directly in that URL. That will help you also find a very clear copy of the document. I'm going to pause now. So let's take a look now at this amazing, amazing document of world history. It's a document that, according to the propaganda of the time, some of the primary sources, it's passed down from the heavens to those of us on earth. Look at the artwork that is associated with it. Look at the way in which this is something that is handed down from the heavens. It is wise, it's revolutionary, the colours are there. This is the document that hopefully you've found. So, let's look at the 17 articles. I'll just make this, I think that's all right, I might make it a little bit smaller so it all fits on the screen. But here are our 17 articles, and I'd like to zip through them quickly and think of these as revolutionary concepts that we believe in now because of the French Revolution. First article, everyone is born equal and free. The only social distinctions that exist should exist 
because they're good for everybody. The aim of all political associations like government is to preserve people's rights. And the main rights are liberty, property, security, and the right to resist oppression. All government, all rules, all laws, sovereignty, come from the nation, the community. No one individual, no group of individuals, no body, can exercise authority that doesn't come from the people. They're talking about elections. What's liberty? What is freedom? Freedom in our society is to do anything you like as long as it doesn't injure anyone else. And think about that being the basis of our modern courts and our modern laws, our criminal laws and so on. Laws can only exist to stop people hurting society. Nothing can be prevented which is not forbidden by law, and no one can be forced to do anything unless it's by law. That's number five. What's law? It's the will of the people. Every citizen has the right to participate or through a representative in making laws. And that's about parliament. It's got to be the same for everyone, whether it protects or punishes people. All citizens are equal in the eyes of the law. You don't get away with calling yourself a nobleman or a king and not be answerable to the law. Now, I'm going to stop reading through here because I know you can read. But this is an amazing, amazing document. We've only looked at the first few elements, but it talks about no one can be locked up without going to court. Everyone shall be held innocent until proven guilty. No one can be locked up on the basis of their opinions. Everyone should be free to communicate their ideas and opinions. If we're going to have police forces and military, then those military and police forces are there to protect us, not to put us down. Such an amazing, amazing document. Have a look through the 17 articles of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen and think about how that has reshaped our world. It's a truly amazing document.